I know that you're a big proponent of Wyckoff, and Wyckoff has a lot to do with market manipulation and news stories. So what do you think about that? Yeah, so, I mean, do you want me to go ahead and jump to my the, the chart it. and then kind of walk through there? Okay, so let's do this real quick. Let me move over to my chart, and then we'll share the screen. Uh, so first thing is I drew this up a little bit ago. This this is something, as you know, those of you who know what Wyckoff is and have done a little bit of your own research as to Wyckoff accumulation phase, this is just a, a good mock-up. This is what is called a trading range. So you're going to have the, the middle portion, but you're, every now and then we go past it. We go up to this higher mark. We go a little bit to the lower mark. Uh, you know, we see wicks dropping right here, but overall, we stayed above this line until right here on the 19th of July. So just keep in mind what's happening here. Back right around here, people thought we were in phase D. We're going to get to phase D here in just a second, which I think that we're potentially entering in right here. But people thought we were in phase D right here. And I was like, I don't think that what has happened and what needed to happen has happened yet. Uh, and so when when I was doing my research, you know, I found this article a long, long time ago. I want you to show you guys, this is what this chart looks like, Wyckoff accumulation phase with a spring. You guys, you know, some of you guys are saying, oh, we don't need a spring. We don't need a spring. Well, guess what? It looks like we needed a spring. So this is the chart. Does that not look very, very similar? Not perfect, but very similar to what we see on the chart right there. I'm, I'm of the opinion, yes, it does. But more specifically, let's jump into phase D and what exactly happens in phase D. If you guys want to read this article, just in case you want to do your own research, this is the name of the article. Uh, it goes into the details about who Richard Wyckoff was, why he came up with his opinion, which is based off of market manipulation. So if you guys believe we have seen market manipulation, Give me a one in chat for sure, because this is all about that. One. But moving down to phase, let's read phase C first, and then we'll move into phase D. So I'm going to read this for you guys. It is in phase C that the stock price goes through a decisive test of the remaining supply. The remaining supply, obviously, is when the price gets lower just to test what that supply looks like. So price going down, we're testing the supply. Allowing the smart money operators to ascertain whether the stock is ready to be marked up. As noted above, a spring is a price move below the support level of the trading range, that TR's trading range established in phase A. So going back real quick, phase A, right around here, we are establishing these trading ranges. A spring is when we break through, not just temporarily and then bounce back up, but when we break through with a little bit of confidence. So moving back here, uh, it is an example of a bear trap because the drop below support appears to signal a resumption of the downtrend. In reality, though, this marks the beginning of a new uptrend, trapping the late sellers, the bears. In Wyckoff method, a successful test of supply represented by a spring or a shakeout provides a high-quality probability trading opportunity. A low volume, that is, the, that is the key phrase right there. A low volume spring or a low volume test of a shakeout indicates that the stock is likely to be ready to move up so that this is a good time to initiate at least a partial long position. Going back here, the reason why, remember I said this before earlier in the show, I was like, I was wrong. I was right, and then I was wrong, and I was, I was wrong. Look at the volume right here back on, what is this, the 19th of May, massive volume when we dropped low. You know, that volume stayed pretty high right here. Um, a volume spike right here, a volume spike right here. What is happening right here is the institutions are selling off. But there's a massive movement when prices hit a certain point, and the institutions, the whales, the, the guys manipulating the market are saying, oh, it's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. The volume continued to dwindle, dwindle, dwindle until eventually we got down here. We even went below the trading range, and the volume stayed low. According to Wyckoff, obviously, if you're looking at the charts and you're looking at these things, it, the retail investor is going to say, okay, there's a lot of momentum moving down. However, this is when the institutions, according to Richard Wyckoff, this is when they actually start to do their work, and we see an uptick, and, and we see the price go up. Now, phase D, if we are correct in our analysis, what should follow is a consistent dominance of demand over supply. This is evidenced by a pattern of advances or SOSs on a wide widening spread, a price spread, increasing volume, as well as reactions, LPS, on a smaller spread and diminished volumes. During phase D, the price will move at least to the top of the trading range. Uh, LPSs in this phase are generally excellent places to initiate or add profitable long positions. Just in case you're wondering what those things are, let's look back here in SOS. You guys are going to see 
SOS is when we get above this trading range. This trading range's peak is sitting right around 42,000. So if we can jump above 42, that to me would be the confirmation. Not only are we in Wyckoff accumulation, we are in phase D. And if it plays the way it should, we'll play here for a little bit before ascending potentially to new all-time highs, which is something I did predict last week. I said, I do think we're going to, before the end of the year, hit new all-time highs. Yep. But I, I, again, like I said, I was wrong. No, stop sharing now. I was wrong because I did say, no, guys, we're going back below 30 where, you know, the chart says it, you know, the volume says it. And it, it was like, I played myself I, because if I had done you my research yourself. correctly, if I had done my research correctly, I should have seen, oh my gosh, guys, there's something different about this dip. The volume is low. This is exactly what Richard Wyckoff called. And I should have entered along. I didn't. Uh, and that's okay. The next time around this happens, I'll be an experienced trader and I'll, I'll make that call, you know? So Tim, let's give a <clears throat> let's drop a one in chat if the reason you tune into this show is because you want to make money. Drop a one in chat if that's why you tune in. I'm sure that is a big portion of you guys. Tim, how do you use everything that you just said to make some money in this market? That is a question that I am still working out. You know, that because the thing is, is even when you do your research, so in that article, it talks about uh, just in case some of you guys are like, oh, okay, I'm gonna start following Wyckoff and stop learning how to read technical analysis. While I read it wrong, he talked about how technical analysis is still needed. First of all, if you don't know how to read technical analysis and know the movements with the volume and with everything else, you're going to guess wrong there as well. However, uh, it says in there, it says, listen, there are times where Wyckoff does not play perfectly, and there are times where you need to use outside and other references as well. So to me, I, I see the learning Wyckoff, and I have a lot to learn. I've, I've been studying the accumulation phase a lot. I need to still learn distribution phase, and I need to learn redistribution phase, and I need to learn, you know, there's a, there's a couple different phases to it. I'm not 100% certain I know all the details of. Uh, but I want to pair that knowledge with my technical analysis, with my ability to read fundamental analysis and understand what's significant and what's not significant. It's it's ultimately like building a toolbox. It's like building a whole trading toolbox. And you, you don't, you know, it's really cool when you when you have a project that you need to nail some nails to get a hammer. But when there comes a project, you need to use a screwdriver, you need to go get a screwdriver. And then eventually you build up that toolbox to where you're ready for anything that happens at any point. And that's how I feel like Wyckoff, it's like a really cool tool to add to my trading toolbox.